All right, so these are different units that can be used to represent um, the concentrations that are found with solutions. They describe their composition. We've talked about all of these before except for number four, molarity, the moles of solute per liters of solution, mass percent, the percent of uh, the grams of your solute, or it could be the grams of your solvent divided by the grams of your solution times 100. Mole fraction, which would be the moles of one component over the total moles of your solution. And molality, which is the moles of your solute per kilograms of your solvent. Molality is independent of temperature since you're dealing with quantities that are masses. Um, again, grams converted to moles, grams converted to kilograms. And so molality is going to be used in properties that are going to change dependent on temperature, um, such as um, freezing point when you want to try to lower it. We'll see that with colligative properties in the next video. Molarity, um, dealing with volume, will change due to temperature, um, so that would not be an appropriate choice. And the other thing I want to remind you is that the solute and the solvent together make your solution. So conservation of mass can help us with some of these pieces. If we know part, we know the total, we know the solution, or if we know the solute or the solvent, we should be able to find the other piece. So I'm just going to go through a couple of sample problems with these. Um, the first one we're going to look at is antifreeze solution. We are told that the antifreeze solution is 40% ethylene glycol by mass, um, C2H6O2. So remember, that's a mass percent. So if we're saying that it's 40%, we could assume if we had 100 grams, that 40 grams of that solution um, was ethylene glycol. So 40 grams of the solute um, was present and 100 grams of the solution. You're also given the density of the solution, which is the only way we can relate mass to volume, um, 1.05 grams per centimeters cubed. That is specifically for solution. And you want to calculate the molarity, the molality, and the mole fraction of your ethylene glycol. Well, molarity is moles of solute per liters of solution. And the information we were given is dealing with grams of solute per grams of solution. So if we take those pieces, we can convert our grams of solute into moles, which we can using molar mass. And if we can convert our grams of solution into volume, which we can using density, and we deal with the units that a centimeter cubed is equal to a milliliter, we know a thousand milliliters equals one liter, we should be able to calculate the molarity of our solution. 6.77 molar. Um, the next piece we can take a look at, it says, is molality. Molality requires us to know something about the solvent. And so far, all we know are the solute and the solution. But because we know the solute and we know the solution, we can take the difference to find the solvent, which would be 60 grams. And now, if we wanted to find the molality, we can take those grams of ethylene glycol and divide it by the grams of water and convert them to the respective units we would expect to find with molality, converting the grams of ethylene glycol into moles and converting the grams of water into kilograms. And when we do that math through, we get 10.7 little m. Finally, we wanted to find the mole fraction. And to find the mole fraction, we can't just take the grams of solution and convert it to moles because we can only go from grams to moles with pure substances. We can, however, convert the grams of ethylene glycol and the grams of water into moles. And when we do that math using their molar masses, we get 0.644 moles for ethylene glycol. So that's just using that first step, taking the 40 grams and dividing it by 62.08 and taking our 60 grams and dividing it by 18.02 to get 3.33 moles of water. When we add those together, we get the moles of our solution, and we divide them into the moles of our solute, we get our mole fraction, 0.162. So here we want to calculate the molarity and the mole fraction of acetone in a 1.00 molal solution of acetone and ethanol. 
we have the volumes of acetone and ethanol are additive. So that means that if we know the milliliters we have of each of those respective solutions, we should be able to add them together to get the milliliters total. If we know the volume of our solute and we know the volume of our solvent, together they would make the volume of our solution, kind of like what we just did with mass. Knowing that molarity is moles of solute per liters of solution, and that molality is moles of solute per kilograms of solvent. If we have a one molal solution of acetone, we have one mole of acetone and one kilogram of ethanol. So molarity would have that solute piece in the numerator, and it would be divided by the volume of our solution. Um, however, we don't know that piece just yet. We're going to go ahead and we're finding the grams, excuse me first, I had to think a second. We're converting our moles of the acetone into grams so that we can use that to find the volume of our acetone because we need to have the volume pieces for both to get the volume of our solution. We have one kilogram of ethanol because again that one molal solution was one mole of the acetone, our solute, over one kilogram of our solvent. When we do those conversions through and account for the density, we get 1270 milliliters. When we add those together, we get that our volume of our solution would be 1270 plus 73.7. Sorry, I'm not doing that math super well in my head right now. I think it's like 1343.7 milliliters. So molarity would be the moles of our solute over the volume of our solution once we convert it to liters, and that would give us a molarity of 0.746. Mole fraction, we need to have moles of both components. We have moles of our acetone, but we don't have moles yet of our ethanol. We can convert that one kilogram of ethanol into grams by multiplying it by a thousand and use its molar mass to find the moles of ethanol, 21.7. And now we can have the moles of our acetone, our solute, divided by the moles of our solution, the acetone and the ethanol to find the mole fraction of our acetone, 0 0.0441. So there's lots of ways you can use these different um, units to represent a composition of a solution to relate um, those units of concentration to one another.